Hey, it's Corey from Peculiar Photos, and we need to talk about Search Generative Experience, or SGE. And if you haven't been paying attention, now is the time to pay attention. Google is starting to roll this out more broadly, and it's really, in my opinion, the future of search. And so we'll talk a little bit today about how you might use SGE, or Search Generative Experience, to inform your decisions about how you're optimizing your online presence to make sure that you're ready to appear in this sort of future search result that Google will likely be using as default sooner than later. So let's jump right in. Uh, I'm gonna go over here to a screen share and just show you uh, if you're trying to figure out what in the world is SGE. There's a blog post Google announced May 10th, 2023, uh, that they were going to make this available in labs in search labs and i'll show you here in just a second um, how to get that but this gives you an overview of what sge is all about it's worth the read it's pretty good uh, and then if you want to use it right now you need to opt in it's sort of a beta program uh, and you need to go to labs.google.com search if you do that you'll come here and have the ability to turn on and off different experiments and the one we're talking about right now is SGE generative AI in search you can also turn on SGE while browsing uh, but this is the main thing that you're trying to do right now uh, test out SGE generative AI in search let's talk a little bit about what exactly you need to be looking at and how this works okay so I've got a few searches pulled up to illustrate a few different things uh, here we have a search for Portland wedding photographers and you have to click generate right now. You'll see a button right here that'll say generate AI uh, search on a lot of these queries. Uh, whenever you do, you get this sort of result. And it's a new thing that is different than what you've seen before. Uh, we had this from sources across the web and some organic results and Reddit and directories and we might usually see a map. Uh, but now we have this sort of all-in-one AI generated result that's going to give you a list of photographers. It's going to give you some sources. It's going to give you a map and it may have some other information here. It'll also give you the opportunity to follow up. We're going to talk about each of these pieces. All right. So first of all, you should pay attention to the sources. This is actually really interesting to me right now because a lot of times the sources that it's using are not ones that I would have typically recommended that photographers worry about being listed on. I'm seeing a lot of Yelp. I'm seeing a lot of expertise.com. I'm seeing a lot of Zola. I'm seeing a lot of smaller, less heard of directories that are primary sources for this generative AI result. It kind of makes me wonder if Google has been using these sort of citations more heavily than I thought in the past, if they would put so much emphasis on this here. But either way, right now, a great thing to do would be to go to each of the sources and see if it's possible for you to sign up and whether it makes sense for your marketing budget. And, you know, sometimes these directories will be, uh, they'll have a business model that doesn't really make sense for you. Zola is one where, you know, the inquiries go through the Zola website. Uh, there's some others that you have to book the photographer directly on the platform. That might not be the right thing for you, but it's still worth noting that if you're listed on these sources, you may be more likely to get recommended in the SGE results here. I'm not sure of that, but it's certainly a great observation that you should be looking into. Um, okay, so the next thing is reviews. Uh, it, it's very clear that they're heavily relying on Google reviews to generate um, some of the summaries that are showing up here in SGE. So, for example, this one says some some say they all say some say some say the natural light makes for incredible photos, and others praise the bridal portraits. And I looked through some of the reviews over here and found, you know, things like the natural light gave me a, a an extra glow, blah, blah, blah. You know, so it's talking about the natural light several times in here, and then Google pulled that out and highlighted it here. I think it's more important than ever that you make sure that you're getting as many Google reviews as possible and encouraging people to describe what it is that they loved about working with you, what it is that they felt set you apart, how you were different than the other competitors that they 
uh, considered. You don't have to say it exactly in those words, but somehow when you prompt for the review, you want to make sure that they're more likely to use the words that you're hoping they'll use. And this honestly starts at the very beginning whenever they first visit your website and you give them the words that you want them to use to describe your photography or the experience of working with you, you then deliver on that experience and then hopefully with the review, they're gonna repeat back the things that you basically indoctrinated them to say in the beginning. This is a whole process, right? But it's more important than ever that you really make sure that you're getting these reviews, they're coming in and you give Google more information to go on about what people are saying about you. Uh, I think that's gonna be an important factor. I'm a little less uh, convinced that Google will stick with sources like these directories because a lot of them have seemed to be very low quality to me. I wonder if it's almost a placeholder in this case, but I think that the reviews will continue to be a very heavy factor. At least that's my opinion. You can also notice little things about the Google business profile, uh, the location that's selected and the category that's selected sometimes show up as bubbles or tags here. Um, just really interesting things that you can find. Also, just in general, playing around with searching through people's reviews, sometimes you'll see really interesting AI summaries pulled into uh, the, the features that have already been there, things like these tags. What are the things that people are saying over and over? This might inspire you to make sure that you're collecting reviews that say these same things over and over. Pay attention to the bubbles that are generated on your profile and see if you can influence them over time by making sure that you're asking the right kind of people for reviews. Okay, so we've talked about sources, we talked about reviews. Let's go on to uh, the map and address. This is really interesting. I'm seeing that the map is not always aligning with the what would normally be seen as the map in the map pack. I'm also, unfortunately, seeing that for the photography results, I've, t I've tested this on a bunch of different specialties in different cities. So far, I haven't found an example where they're pulling in a photographer listing that doesn't have an address listed. All of these have address uh, the address field visible and public. And I know that's a big topic with photographers who, especially wedding photographers who work on location, don't have a studio and don't want to show their home address. So far, I've maybe only tested this on 20 or 30 um, queries and all of them have had addresses, every single one. Uh, and this is actually, I think I've left this up as a case. No, there was another one. I think it was maybe this one. I had one up earlier and basically, if you look in the, the map pack, the ones that don't have directions as an option are the ones that rank uh, there without the uh, address being visible. I found one where the map pack had, oh, here's one like Davy Morgan um, doesn't have directions, but then Davy Morgan does not show up here. Uh, there was actually another one that I found as well. So this is a thread that I'm seeing so far. Address being listed seems to almost be a requirement. I'm not sure if that's actually true. Uh, I would love for you to test this and leave me a comment on this video to see if you're seeing something different. I hope that we will see things different over time as Google improves this because that doesn't really seem fair to only show photographers that have a physical address listed. Uh, finally, let's talk about the follow-up. So at the bottom of this result, we have ask a follow-up. You can ask a follow-up with a photo, by the way. So if you are like, I wanna see photographers that have uh, photos with a certain style and you upload a photo with that style, it could potentially give you those results. You can also see that they suggest some follow-up questions. I highly recommend that you do some experimenting with the different queries related to your business and the topics that you like to cover on your website and see what questions Google is trying to prompt people to ask next and make sure that those things are clearly answered on your website. I didn't uh, show any really interesting examples here because as I've been testing today, the ask a follow-up is broken. It's not working on my computer or my browser. I'm not sure if it's something wrong with, I'm using Brave, I'm not sure if there's an issue there or uh, if it's just a bug that will get worked out, but it was basically just glitching every time I tried to ask a question. But I highly recommend trying this. Just ask some interesting follow-up questions. Think about uh, a client who might have searched for Greenville wedding photographers. What's the next thing that they might want to know to narrow down the list even more? Try asking Google and see if they can actually uh, uh, generate something more specific. 
Well, I think that's really all that I wanted to say now. I just wanted to make sure that you know about Search Generative Experience, or SGE, that you have opted in via Search Labs, and that you poke around to experiment to see what it is that you might be able to optimize with your online presence to show up more in these uh, results. You'll also find that certain specialties or other topics can have really different kinds of results. This is very dynamic. And so you might find some other interesting things that I didn't show here. If you do, I'd like to hear your comments. So make sure you leave a comment on this video. Let us know what did you find that was interesting? What have you found with SGE so far? Have you been able to do anything specific that took you from not showing up in the generated uh, answer to then later after you made these changes showing up in the generated answer? If so, please share the tips. We'd love to hear from you. I'll be doing more experimenting with this and I would love to follow up as a conversation with all of you. All right, I'll see you in the next video.